to any adventure. But when allergies and congestion strike, take Allegra D, a non-drowsy antihistamine plus a powerful decongestant. So you can always say yes to putting your true colors on display. Say yes to Allegra D. Happening now. One woman shot to death, another one stabbed. Here at a barber shop, Alpha Bandera Road, we'll have a live report as police work to track down the suspect. A man says he believes it was a plasma transplant that allowed his father to be alive and home for his 18th birthday, and today he's paying it forward. I'm Devin Clark. Coming up, we'll have that story and tell you how others who had COVID-19 could possibly help sick patients as well. President Trump now says the White House Coronavirus Task Force will continue on, but with a different focus. And new hotspots show coronavirus challenges are still very steep. I'm Karen Kepa in Washington with that coming up. And overall, today is a fairly average day for this time of year. However, get ready for temperatures to take a bit of a dive. I'll talk about our next cold front coming up in a few minutes. Drinking alcohol, hot water, do these prevent COVID-19? We're debunking the myths. Coming up, the News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, a deadly shooting inside a northwest side barber shop. Right now, police are working to track down the man they say shot and killed one woman and stabbed another multiple times. It happened at a diesel barber shop that's off of Bandair Road near 1604. Stephanie Cerner has been gathering information at the scene and she joins us now live. So Stephanie, what can you tell us so far? Well, Ursula, police tell us that this happened about 1230 this afternoon. And when they got here, they found a woman dead at the back of the barber shop. Now, they say that she had been shot and that another woman who had been stabbed ran to the payway a few businesses down. Now, she told police that she was stabbed by the same man who shot the woman in the barbershop. Now, the owner of the diesel barbershop, Shane Brown, tells us his employees were getting ready to open on Friday when a man walked in asking to make an appointment. Now, Shane says the employees told the man he would need a form of payment, so that man stepped out to get it, and when he returned, he was armed. We're up here cleaning and, and prepping and doing everything that we can to make sure that, you know, it's safe for our clients that are going to come in on starting on Friday. And then the, just out of the blue, something something like this with no rhyme or no reason, no motive of, of, of any kind. I mean, it's a, my understanding, we've never seen this individual before. No one recognized the person. And it's just, it's just senseless. Grew up in retail. The owner tells us that the employee who was stabbed was taken to the hospital, but that he was, they were talking to her over the phone. Now, police say the suspect is a man in his early 30s, and they are still working to track him down. We are live on the city's northwest side. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stephanie. New at 5, we've learned the name of a 34-year-old man killed outside an east side home last night. He's been identified as Anthony Hardiman. Police say two other people were grazed by bullets outside the home on Belinda Lee. That's near South WW White and East Houston Street. Witnesses told police the shooters drove by in a maroon SUV, fired multiple shots, striking the victims in several homes. No one else was injured. At last check, no arrests had been made. We have some new information on a deadly wrong way crash that happened over the weekend. We've now learned that Joseph Woolard, the driver who allegedly killed 20 year old Asante Sebastian Contreras in a head on crash, was out on bond on a charge of aggravated assault against a public servant. This was in connection to a March 2019 shootout between Woolard and a Bear County Sheriff's deputy at the Blazing Star RV Resort in West Bear County. District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says Woolard had warrants out for his arrest for bond violations. On Sunday, during a chase with SAPD, he ended up crashing head on into Contreras, killing him. In addition to the assault charge, Woolard is now facing a charge of murder. With Governor Greg Abbott's announcement to reopen more businesses this weekend, Traders Village plans to give reopening a second shot. The outdoor flea market was prevented from operating this past weekend by city officials. Yesterday, the Texas Division of Emergency, Emergency Management told KSAT that Traders Village is considered to be a shopping mall and therefore can reopen at 25% capacity. The flea market is asking vendors and customers to wear face masks. There will be no live music, no rides, and limited food stands. 
The family of a man who they believe is alive right now because of a plasma transfusion went to the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center today to pay it forward. Last month, Jimmy Hayden was on a ventilator battling COVID-19. That is until he received plasma containing antibodies from a former patient. A day or two later, he began to improve significantly. As Devin Clark shows us, Hayden's wife and son are now hoping they'll make the same impact on other families. It's the least I could do is be able to donate and help somebody else. Just over a month ago, Wyatt Hayden was worried about losing his father, 47 year old Jimmy Hayden, to COVID 19. That is until Jimmy received plasma with antibodies from a former patient and began to recover almost immediately. For Wyatt, who recently turned 18, the timing couldn't have been better. Fortunate enough, he got to come home to see us for my birthday and he got to spend it with him. Uh, he was quarantined in his room uh, for most of the day, but we got to go sit outside and enjoy it like the nice air. It's a present Wyatt and his mother, Ashley Hayden, who both experienced light symptoms, didn't take for granted and wanted to share. We were very uh, much wanting to help others the way we were helped. So we decided to get the antibody testing and found out we were positive with the antibodies. The plan was for both mother and son to donate today. You have to have an iron level of 12.5. My level was at 12. So I was really close, but not there to be able to donate today. So instead, Ashley deferred her plans and cheered her son on. Though for both of them, having their loved one back was more than enough motivation to help the cause. Since I can't, couldn't help my husband and I couldn't be there with him at the hospital, this is what I wanted to do to help others. Ashley Hayden says she plans to take iron supplements and may even be able to donate alongside her husband and another child who plan to do the same. For information on finding out if you're eligible to donate plasma that could help a sick COVID-19 patient, just visit our website, ksat.com. Reporting outside the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Meantime, SA Metro Health and the San Antonio Fire Department announcing two new mobile testing sites that are free to the public. One is going to be in the parking lot of the Las Palmas Library on Castroville Road. The other site at Woodlawn Lake Park. Both locations will be open tomorrow, May 7th through Saturday, May 9th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You do not have to have a scheduled appointment. You rather you, you can find more information on the uh, more information on the TX COVID test at uh, txcovidtest.org. Frustrated. That's how many public health experts feel despite the data, most states loosening restrictions, some even allowing schools to reopen despite coronavirus infections rising. Karen Kava with the latest from Washington. Karen. Yeah, Steve, more than 40 states by the end of the week will have reopened in some way. And a researcher testifying on Capitol Hill today said none of them are ready. They don't meet all of their guidelines laid forth by the White House Coronavirus Task Force. Meanwhile, President Trump says that task force is going to stay together, but they're going to have some different priorities. As President Trump honors nurses responding to the COVID-19 crisis, he's expanding the responsibilities of the Coronavirus Task Force. We're going to add a couple of people to it. And that will again be for the opening of our country. This comes as ADP reports American private payrolls plummeted by 20.2 million jobs in April. That is the worst month on record. The jobs numbers are very, very chilling. The dire data released just two days before the Labor Department jobs report, which is expected to paint an equally bleak picture of the pandemic economy. This is the biggest shock that our economy has ever seen. While states work to get back to business, Montana is going a step further, allowing some schools to reopen as early as Thursday. A few of our local districts are giving it a shot and we're going to be there every step of the way with them. All but seven states are restarting their economies even as cases rise dramatically. From Minnesota to Texas, Tennessee and Nebraska, the deadly virus is still gripping the country. You take New York out of the national numbers, the numbers for the rest of the nation are going up. They are going up. To me, that vindicates what we're doing here in New York, which says, follow the science. The science is in focus on Capitol Hill. The hearing will come to order. As experts testify on the next steps needed to combat coronavirus. There's nothing more important in the fight against this virus than developing a vaccine. 
And of course, the White House has Operation Warp Speed. It is a very ambitious goal of having 300 million doses of a potential vaccine by January. Some scientists are very skeptical of that timeline simply because of the amount of time it takes to develop a vaccine. An administration official says that the Trump administration has identified at least 14 potential vaccines. And now there are discussions about a possible vaccine czar, someone with good roots in the scientific community to help oversee that process. Stephen Ursula. A vaccine czar. Karen Kafel live in Washington. Thank you, Karen. Dryers, mosquitoes, baths, and alcohol. What do all these things have in common? Well, recently they've become associated with COVID-19, but we are now debunking these myths. Do baths protect us from COVID? If we get sick, will it be for life? These are a few of the myths that bear addressing. The World Health Organization has provided some answers, but remember, COVID-19 is new, so we're all still learning new things about it every day. So, can heat kill the virus? At this time, medical researchers know that COVID-19 can be spread in warm weather. Dryers and hot baths do not prevent or kill the virus, since our body temperature remains the same. We should also mention that taking extremely hot baths can burn you. If you have a mosquito bite, are you at risk for COVID-19? No, there has been no evidence to suggest mosquitoes transmit the virus. They do, however, still transmit other viruses like Zika. So remember, use your bug spray when you need it. Another myth debunked, drinking alcohol will not prevent you from getting COVID-19. And finally, if you do get infected with the novel coronavirus, this does not mean you will have it for life. The severity of symptoms ranges based on factors like age and other pre-existing medical conditions. For some, though, COVID can cause prolonged breathing problems as well as some organ diseases. Others, though, are recovering without any complications at all. As always, wash your hands frequently, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth, wear a mask when you're out, and keep on social distancing. If you're concerned that you might be sick, please contact your primary care provider. The Whitty Museum counting down the days till it will reopen its doors to visitors once again, despite being given the green light to reopen at the start of May. The museum plans to reopen to members on May 27th. The president and CEO of the Witty, Maurice McDermott, says visits will be a bit different to the museum. They now will have plexiglass protectors and six foot distance markers in place. Visitors will be required to wear a mask and they're each going to be given a stylus pen to eliminate contact with touch screens or audio devices. A lot of what we have at the Whittier hands-on, and so anything hands-on will be removed from the galleries, but we will still keep the interactive experiences, which are so fabulous. The museum will be open to all guests starting May 30th. It will operate at 25% capacity. You can purchase tickets, though, online right now. And here's a live look outside on this Wednesday afternoon. Nice baby blue sky out there. We got rid of the smoke and a lot of the haze that was in the air yesterday. Drier air in place. You notice the lack of humidity outside today. Temperature wise, most of us are in the 80s. 88 Floresville. We're 84 in Bernie. New Braunfels 87 in Micah now at 86 degrees. With the lack of humidity, a comfortable evening. Temperatures falling off nicely. Have dinner outside if you can. I mean, by 8 p.m., just 82 degrees, low humidity, southeasterly breeze will start to kick in and that's going to cause some changes starting tomorrow. So we have that to talk about along with another cold front, which will have a bigger impact on your weekend coming up. Thank you, Adam. Cooking more at home? Oh yeah, a good food processor might be the kitchen gadget you need to make the job easier. Up next, we're going to take a look at some of Consumer Reports top picks. If you're cooking from home a lot more, you may not only be looking for new recipes, but a way to make the job easier. A good food processor can help conquer all your chopping and prepping. So 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore. It's got some good recommendations from the experts. 
nice to just be able to throw a casserole together and... Laura Nordstrom has been using her food processor almost daily since she started working from home. So I've been using it to shred cheese, which is way quicker than doing this by hand. If you find yourself routinely cooking for a crowd or like to prep multiple batches of a recipe, a larger food processor can handle lots of chopping, slicing, and shredding. And a smaller food chopper, those are helpful when you need to prep only a handful of something like herbs or nuts. Consumer Reports put several of each type to the test, grating Parmesan, shredding cheddar and carrots, and chopping onions and almonds. Different tasks got different results. So if chopping, grating, and pureeing in small batches is your priority, CR recommends this Ninja Master Prep Professional. It's $60. If you want capacity and performance, you'll have to pay a lot more. The Breville Sous Chef outperformed all of the larger processors, but it's $400. If that's too steep, CR suggests this Cuisinart Custom. It's $180, and it's quieter. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's take a live look with Sky 12 right now. 86 degrees. That Beautiful is Beautiful shot over the hill country. Our producer was not lying. She said, we're going to show you something pretty. I'm guessing Dirty. Government Canyon State Natural Area, maybe. Mm, nice. It's nice. That's just my guess. I don't know. Yeah. Looks it's nice. pretty. It's green. We'll take it. We've got some agreement in the control room as well. Government right. Canyon? Yes, yeah, that's, that's a good, worth the consensus. Okay. That is. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful day out there. Lower humidity as well. We actually had a few showers earlier today. That was nice. A little bit of morning rain some of us woke up to. A little splash here and there. Some of us, a few isolated locations, had some pretty good accumulations out there. So let's take a look at the rain estimates from our Doppler radar. And notice that most of it was basically south of Highway 90. And particularly along parts of the coastal plain. I mean, we're talking Carnes County on into uh, DeWitt and... Quero, you see the good accumulations here. Western DeWitt County, 1.7 inches estimated. Quero, about 1.3. Even near Victoria, some uh, estimates of over an inch. And even west and southwest of Poteet there, and the west side of Atascosa County, 1.2 inches estimated. So that was a nice start to the day for some folks, but unfortunately, not, not many of us actually got the rain. Now some lingering clouds south of San Antonio, uh, but overall uneventful this evening and most of the day tomorrow. Across the state, few lingering showers down in the valley. That's all we have to talk about. And then some of the clouds that are still in our sky. What's coming down the pike is some cooler air off to the north of us. And this is really unseasonably cool air. I mean, we're talking temperatures right now in the 30s and 20s in Canada, the source region of this cooler air. And we're going to have a cold front that's going to tap into that, pull it southward, and it's going to put a dent in our temperatures as we get into the weekend. You look at the readings now, 80s across Texas. We have some 60s and then 50s right behind that cold front, but it's going to get even colder for folks up north, and that cold air is going to be plunging southward. And that's our Friday cold front that we've been talking about. 80s. Pretty much everywhere. Look at this. 83 Beeville, 86 San Antonio, 83 Kerrville, 88 Del Rio. Not a big temperature spread out there this afternoon. And we're basically at our high temperature for the day. So you compare today to what's coming ahead. Tomorrow, mid 80s again, Friday, lower 80s. That's when the cold front hits. So by Saturday, the effects of that cold front will be felt. And it looks like we'll have afternoon high temperatures down in the mid 70s on Saturday. So we'll be running about 10 degrees below average for those afternoon readings for the first part of the weekend. Hey, dew points are down. We had that northeasterly wind yesterday and last night, so drier air in place for now. Here's our future cast. That wind shifts southeasterly tonight. We all know what that means when the wind's coming off the Gulf of Mexico, increasing humidity. So by tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, sticky again outside. Dew points well into the 60s, right near 70, but that'll all be swept away midday Friday when the cold front moves through. So one muggy day and that's going to be tomorrow. And then we'll have another stretch with a lack of humidity in the air. So temperature wise tomorrow morning 61 to start the day 73 at noon 85 for the high temperature. And I do think we'll have a decent amount of cloud cover to start the day and then just some sunshine breaking out here and there through the afternoon breezy that southeasterly wind will be noticeable at 15 to 20 miles per hour by Friday gusty as well because of that cold front. 
an isolated shower or two. That would be it on Friday. Not expecting much in terms of rainfall. Then we get into the weekend. There's the cooler weather on Saturday, Sunday, Mother's Day. Oh yeah, sunny, low humidity, 81 after a morning of 53. Enjoy. Mm. I'm thinking brunch on the patio. Something. A little yeah. picnic. Social distancing, of course. Of course. Yeah. Within the household. All right. No, okay. So we know the schedule will be released tomorrow. That's really all we know. And that's a given for now. But what happens if they have to make contingency plans based on the coronavirus and the canceling games or games without fans? What the commissioner now wants is a contingency plan in place before that announcement is made tomorrow. When we come back, what they're discussing and how the COVID-19 pandemic will affect the ESPYs coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The NFL is set to announce its regular season schedule tomorrow night at 7 p.m., but before that happens, Commissioner Roger Goodell has ordered that all teams must have a ticket refund policy in place in case games are canceled or play without fans due to the coronavirus. In a memo sent to all 32 teams and obtained by the Associated Press, Goodell says all clubs will have a policy in place to cover those two possibilities for anyone purchasing a ticket directly from the team with the option to either receive a full refund or apply the amount toward a future ticket purchase directly from the club. But what about the secondary market? The league also received pledges from both Ticketmaster and SeatGeek to make full refunds available for all ticket sales within no more than 30 days following a cancellation. StubHub said it would only do so where required by state law. At the same time, the NFL is planning on kicking off its season on time, but Goodell admits in the memo there are unique circumstances facing us this year. The NBA has cleared the way for team practice facilities to open this Friday with certain restrictions, including four players in the facility at one time and no coaches present. Spurs president and CEO R.C. Buford said that does not necessarily mean that the Spurs will open their practice facility on Friday, saying it will depend on if medical experts determine it's safe to do so for the players. The hiatus has given several players who were injured a chance to improve since the shutdown began on March 11th due to the coronavirus. And should the league decide to resume play rather than cancel the rest of the season, and Ben Simmons may be one of those players that benefits from the hiatus. The 76ers all-star guard is getting closer to getting cleared to play after dealing with nerve issues in his lower back to force him to miss eight straight games before the league was put on hold. It's according to Sixers general manager Elton Brand, but keep in mind Simmons, like all NBA players, have yet to play during any five-on-five -five workouts. The ESPYs have become the latest live event to be affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Instead of a live broadcast in Los Angeles this July, including the red carpet, the annual award show will shift its focus from honoring athletic accomplishments to celebrating acts of heroism and humanitarian aid during the pandemic. It will not be broadcast on ABC as a live event. Instead, it will be a two-hour produced broadcast. It will now air on June the 21st on ESPN. That will include the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage, the Pat Tillman Award for Service, and the Jimmy V Award for Perseverance, to name a few. That has always been a very big spot during the summer, but in this particular case, obviously, other arrangements had to be made because you can't get that many people to together at this time. And it makes sense for who they're going to honor and why. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. So tomorrow, a little more cloud cover than sunshine, breezy and more humid. But that cold front makes an impact. Temperatures dropping off as we get into the weekend. Beautiful temperatures. Thank you. And thank you for watching the News at 5. World News up next. See you back here at 6.